Hello, and today we're going to be completing activity 3.1.3 series and parallel circuits for uh, Project Lead the Way PLTW Principles of Engineering with PLE. Uh, we're going to start by uh, we're doing the physical build component, which requires us to get uh, three different resistors. Uh, the first one we're going to get is going to be 100 ohms, so we want one zero, so brown and then black, and then time 10, that gives us 10 times. To get 100, we need 10, so it's going to be brown, black, brown. So we get that resistor. I have one sitting right here. Uh, so that's going to be our first resistor we use, uh, brown, black, brown. Then the second one is going to be a 220. Uh, 220, again, the first two digits are 2 and 2, so that's going to be red and red. And then to make it 220, we have to multiply by 10, which is going to be all brown. Uh, so I have my 220 right here, which is red, red, brown. Uh, then our third one is a 330, so same method. First two digits are 3 and 3, 3, 3, and then times 10 uh, gives us 330, so we have an orange, orange, brown here. Uh, so those are the three resistors we're going to use. It tells us to place them in series, so we're going to, in our breadboard here, uh, place them in series. So I'm going to put them in the same order I talked about them, so I'm going to start with my 100 ohm resistor. And uh, to put it in series, uh, I have my... Uh, electri electricity conventional flow coming from my positive uh, coming into this red wire uh, then from there I'm going to take a jumper wire I'm going to use an uh, orange jumper wire and take it from uh, again in your breadboard everything on the end connects vertically so everything from the top all the way down to the bottom on this plus side is connected underneath so I'm going to take my wire I'm going to just stick it in any of those holes in the positive end on my breadboard. Then I'm going to take that, and it doesn't matter what slot I put it in. I just have to pick one slot, and that's where I'm going to begin my circuit. So for today, I'm just going to put it in number three and start at number three. Uh, from there, I'm going to take my 100 ohm resistor, uh, put the first leg into that third row, that number three, in line with that orange uh, wire. Then I take my second one, and I can, again, I need to kind of pick where I want to put it. So I'm just going to put this one into row 13. So that's where my 100 ohm resistor is going to go. Then next I'm going to add my 220. The 220, I'm going to do same similar process. I'm going to go where I ended my last one, which was 13. So I'm just going to go in that row 13, uh, place it in any of the holes in row 13, and then go down to another spot on my breadboard. In this case, I'm going to go down to row 20. So that gives me my 220. Then finally we have our 330. Our 330 I'm going to take again in that same row, row number 20. And I'll place it in that row. And then I'm going to place it somewhere again. Which one doesn't matter. I'm just going to put it in another row. And in my case it's going to go into row 28. From there I need to continue my electricity flow back to uh, my negative end. So I'm going to have my uh, blue jumper wire go in the same row as the last leg which was row 28. And I'm going to just jump it back over by where my uh, negative back to my power supply is. So that's our setup for our breadboard. Uh, next, we want to turn on our power supply. So we have our power supply turned on. It's set at 3 volts. And then our next item is measuring out our voltage. So I'm going to do all my voltages first, and then I'll adjust my multimeter, and then do all my currents. If you want to, you can jump around the power and the pathways a list uh, but in this case I'm going to do all my voltages first so starting off I'm going to use uh, my red and black probes I'm going to put my to get the overall in and out I'm just going to go to my power supply it should be about three so I got my multimeter set at the 20 because it should be more than two so I'm at 20 I'm set at voltage I'm at DC voltage with the solid line with the dash line underneath I have my probe plugged into the proper port on my multimeter and my common ground plugged in where it should be. I'm just going to touch both uh, my alligator leads that bring my electricity in. And then we expect a value right around 3. So in this case, I get a value, I get them both on there, of about 3.09 volts coming in. So we got about 3.09 volts coming into our circuit. Uh, then next, we're going to go uh, to each one of our resistors. So voltage uh, for each one of our resistors. Again, I'm going to put my uh, red positive on the uphill or the positive end, and then my red negative on the negative end. And for this first, the 100 ohm resistor, we get a voltage of about 0.47 volts. Then we're going to do the same thing on my next one, my 220. And we get a voltage of about 1.04 volts 
for that 220. Then finally, we're gonna go to our last one, our 330. And for my 330, I get a voltage of 1.56 volts. Again, you just place it on each side of your uh, resistors to get your reading. Uh, so that's how we get our reading for voltage. Uh, I'll pause it and next we'll do our current. So now I want to get my current reading. So I'm going to start by adjusting my multimeter to read for current. So I'm going to change uh, dial over to, I'm going to go to the 200 mil. I probably could go to the 20 mil, uh, but just so it's not bouncing around as much, I'm going to go to 200 mil. Uh, when you do that, you do have to move uh, your probe. You have to make sure you have it plugged in. Since I'm at the 200 mil, I'm going in the milliamps. Uh, if I was at 10 amps, I'd have to go in the 10 amps. If I keep it in the voltage, I'm not at all going to get the correct reading. Then first we want our total current coming in. So I'm just gonna go, I'm actually gonna remove this wire from where the current's coming in. So that's this first wire coming in. And I'm gonna touch my probe to that. And then I'm gonna take my other probe and touch it to, I'm gonna remove my orange wire and touch those two wires to my probes. And that's gonna give us our current reading. So we get a current of, I don't know if you can read it on your screen, but it's showing about pauses for a second let's get a steady reading right around 4.9 milliamps so we get a reading of about 4.9 milliamps when we do that again i just put each one of my wires coming in onto my probes and that gives us our reading so it maxes out at about 4.9 milliamps it bounces around a little bit anywhere from four and a half to 4.9 I'll plug those two wires back into the same ports they came from. And then we want to do each one of our resistor readings. So to do that, I'm just going to pull out. You can, I'm going to start by pulling out the wire, but we could pull out the leg as well. I'm just going to pull out that uh, first wire, that's, that jumper wire. I'm going to touch that to my red. Then I'm going to take my black probe and touch it to the leg of my resistor so my current runs through uh, my multimeter. And again, we get 4.9 milliamps. So 4.9 milliamps for that first 100 ohm resistor. Then we're going to repeat similar process for our next one. So again, I'm going to unplug this leg. Uh, so I'm going to unplug the le second leg, that leg in port 13 of my uh, breadboard. I accidentally unplugged both. I'll put the first one back. And again, I'm going to put my red probe on that first mold, on that first leg. And then I'm going to take my black and touch it to the second leg so my current runs through my a multimeter and we get again we get current of about 4.9 milliamps for that second one as well i'm going to plug that leg back in uh, so that's what's going into my 220 ohm resistor then i'm going to do that same process i'm going to unplug my second leg so i'm going to plug that leg on my 220 ohm resistor try to keep that first one plugged in still I'm going to touch that to my red probe i'm going to take my black probe and touch it to the leg of my two of my 330 to get the reading for my 330 and again we get a reading of 4.9 milliamps uh, so that's how you get your readings for your series circuit so we had 4.9 milliamps coming in we had 4.9 milliamps at my 100 ohm resistor we had uh, 4.9 at our 220 and 4.9 also at our 330 ohm resistor so that's how we get our current readings uh, we already got our voltage reading so next we'll move on to setting up our parallel circuit so now we want to set up a parallel circuit where you could use the same resistors as our series circuit, the 100, the 220, and the 330. Uh, this time our electricity is going to come in the same way as before into our positive on our breadboard. Then we're going to use that orange uh, jumper wire to take it from that positive. And again, I'm just picking a spot on my breadboard. Uh, this time I'm going to go a little more middle and I'm going to go to this number nine here. Uh, Within that slot, then, I need to put all three of my resistors in row 9 to make them parallel so they all uh, parallel to this circuit. So I'm going to start with my 100, and I'm going to place that in the hole right next to uh, this jumper wire I just put in. So I'll put that in that same row 9. And then the second one, again, I get to pick, since it's my first one, I get to pick where that one's going to go. I'm going to go in 1910 down from the first one. Then we do that same process for our second resistor. So this is my 220 resistor. Again, I'm going in row nine. So same row, I'm going in that spot right next to the one I just put in. 
And then, again, I got to go down row 19. So, again, I'm going right next to it. Again, you don't want the metal wires to touch, but you want them right next to each other in those same uh, row numbers on your bread. Finally, we have our 330. I'm going to do, again, the same process. I'm going to go on row 9 up here on the upper end. And then I'm going to go down to row 19 down on the lower end. And that gives us our parallel circuit. It's not complete yet because we haven't gone back to our negative, but we have all three resistors in parallel. Then to bring it back, I'm going to take this uh, blue jumper wire. I'm going to go in row 19 with these other three resistors. I got to go in that same row. And then I'm going to jump it back to my negative, which then takes us and completes our circuit, closes it, takes it back to our power supply. All right. Next, we want to measure our voltage. Again, I'm going to do all my voltages first, and then we'll go back and do all our resistances afterwards. So I turn on my multimeter. I have it set. Again, we have about 3 volts, so I'm at the 20 because it's more than 2. Uh, I have my probe into the for measuring voltage, and I got my common ground in the correct location. Uh, to start, I'm just going to go to my leads coming from my power supply. So the easiest way to do that for me is I have these alligator clips and I'm going to go right on those alligator clips because they're easy to reach and easy to get to. And when I do that, I get a voltage, if I move my sleeve out of the way, of about 3.03 volts. So that's how much voltage uh, is coming in from my power supply. Next, I'm going to go to each one of my resistors. Uh, I'm going to start with the 330 just because it's the easiest one for me to get to. And when I do that, I get a voltage of, if I get on it, good, about 2.96 volts. So I have a little uh, loss along the way, but I'm at about 2.96 volts. Then next, I'm going to go to my 220, which is also about 2.9, this time 2.97. Finally, I did my 100 ohms. And again, if you're recording your data, make sure you record it in the correct sequence. Uh, this one's also 2.97 volts. So 2.97 volts uh, for each of those. Uh, so that's how we get our voltage. Uh, next, we'll adjust our multimeter over for current. Again, I'm going to go down to 200 just so it doesn't bounce around too much for us. Again, when you do this, you have to move your probe over to the milliamps slot. And now when we do this one, we have to uh, touch we have to interrupt our circuit. So where you interrupt it, it's kind of up to you. I'm going to interrupt it at the first leg. So I'm going to take that nine end of my resistor out. I'm going to touch my uh, black probe to that one. And then I have to be able to touch uh, this wire that's bring that signal in or bring that electricity in. So I have a, I still have a payoff circuit. So I'm going to try to do that without unplugging everything along the way. I accidentally unplugged my negative. So when we do that, if you need help, you can add an extra jumper wire, but we should have enough that we don't need to. Uh, we get a voltage, a uh, current of about 20. Let's hold it steady so we get a steady value. Maybe. Of about 29.2, 29.1 milliamps uh, for a 100 ohm resistor. I'm going to plug that 100 ohm resistor back in. I'm actually going to jump around and probably do my uh, 330 next because it's going to be a little easier to reach to. And then I'll switch that location wise with my 220. So next I'm going to do my 330 just because it's easier to reach, easier to get to. So again I'm taking my black and touching it directly to. And then I'm taking my red and touching it to the metal for my uh, jumper wire. Uh, when we do that. We get a value of about 9.1 milliamps. So when I'm on it, I get about 9.1 milliamps. And that's for my 330 ohm resistor. Uh, the way I'm going to get my 220 is I'm going to switch the location of those two resistors. So I'm going to put the 220, uh, the 330 in the middle now, just so it's out of the way. It's easier to access this 220. I'm going to put the 220 uh, in, back into row 19. I'm not going to plug in, however, into 9 because I'm going to touch my black probe to my resistor and then I'm going to take my red probe and touch it to this uh, metal on my jumper wire and when I do that I should get a value uh, so I adjusted my wire a little bit it was having a little difficulty getting my connection uh, but when we do that we get a value of about 13.3 milliamps for the 220 ohm resistor so again I went to the wire on the orange jumper the metal connector and then I went to my uh, first leg of my 
220 ohm resistor. Uh, we can plug that back in, but that gives us all our current for our parallel circuit. So on a parallel circuit, again, we had them all in the same row. So we went from row 9 here uh, down to row, it doesn't matter, but in this case, we went to row 19. Uh, so they were all in a parallel circuit in this case. Hopefully this helps you with your data collection and set up for uh, activity 3.1.3 series and parallel circuits. Uh, thank you. Have a great day.